So how far off the uh, the door are you going in this case, Joe? I'm doing this one like he wants the other one. Okay. This one I'm going a little further than the recommended 12 feet. All right. I'm going 13. <laughs> Thirteen seven and a half. That's what his other look is, and that's what he wants to go with. Okay, great. So he's got two marks laid out on the floor here, roughly thirteen and a half feet from the door. Exactly thirteen and a half feet from the door. And now he's gonna he's gonna snap a chalk line side to side, figure out where the front of the base plates will set. Yeah, that's a line. Okay, so what we have here is a chalk line. Snap. I'll measure the, uh, the width after because I want to see four Okay. Doing any unpackaging before you t take them out, or you? Oh, yeah. Okay. All, apart. all right, great. Inside the lift columns. Okay. Stuff's packed up so tight that you can't get it back in there the same way it came out. You had to. Make sure you get him a video of taking that box out too, because that's pretty important. Oh, yeah. Do you have any VIN number? Notice as the technician tediously unpacks the, the lifting mechanism. <laughs> Here come the arm locks. <laughs> What is the significance of this portion of the video? Laying out the floor simultaneously unpacking the lift. They got Billy up on top of the truck here installing an upright so right when they stand it up it's already got the upright in place. You don't have to carry that big heavy piece up the ladder. So it's always a good, a good idea to put the upright on uh, if you're doing it like this. In this case you see we're unloading it right out of the back of the truck. So we've got the right side power post in place here. This is the one that the customer has decided to have the, uh, the power unit bracket installed on. So here we have the power unit bracket here. And there's our, our magnetic level. Uh, we have it set up for in a few minutes when we're about to plumb the posts. And it's as simple as just finding that, uh, snapping that chalk line, finding the point off the door where you'd like to have the lift mounted. Joe snaps the line from side to side and then he takes his uh, level and uses a bright piece of yellow chalk to mark out the area so you don't lose your, uh, your chalk line. It's as simple as that. Uh, they're working on getting the other side together now in the upright. We'll be standing that post up and then we'll go on to part two of the install. So we have the uh, Lift spaced at 135 inches, roughly. We've got it on the chalk line, and we're going to check. It's going to check with the customer, and then we're going to drill. We're in line with the other, right? Okay.
Okay, prior to installing the top beam in place on the TP9K, so you're going to find this top beam in two sections inside the packaging. In addition to that, inside your parts box, you're going to find four or five bolts with washers and lock nuts. You'll use those to assemble this upright uh, cross beam section, top beam, prior to installing it. So, uh, these loops will be facing the ceiling. Your, your hydraulic hose and it passes from, from, from the left side of the lift to the right side, near side to off side, the, the hose will pass through those little loops inside the, up, the upright beam, or top beam. Okay, top beam going up. It's under 100 pounds, but it, it's a little easier when you have two people. So he's got it up in place, uh, guy on the right catches the two bolts while the other guy waits and vice versa. Hold everything, hold everything in place. Okay, now that we have the uh, top beam in place and one, one column nailed down, we're double checking our measurements here. Joe's got it marked out so you can you double check your overall width measurement from side to side before nailing down the, uh, the second column. And he wiggles it into place here. <laughs> so, the idea is to get that little bubble between the two lines. Huh? Check your overall width on the front of the post and on the back of the post, as you see here. Now we're ready to drill the offside. As he goes, he drills one hole, put an anchor in the hole, make sure he didn't bump the lift and move it off the line out of whack. And then he's doing the opposite corner now. So as Joe's running this offside hydraulic hose, this is the longer of the two hoses. He's on the offside post opposite where you'd find the power unit. This column was bolted down already, and he's connecting the hose on this side. It runs straight up the back of the post, and then passes through that, I guess you'd call it mouse hole, at the top of the uh, upright, and then you, you lace it through the loops from the off side to the near side, and then it runs down on the back side of that column through the power unit. 
So that's the feed for the offside cylinder there. Billy's finishing anchoring the uh, power unit side column, which we haven't we haven't yet uh, tightened down. We just finished drilling out the anchors and knocking the anchors into the, the holes there. So we'll do the same thing that we did on the first part, which was install and torque the hydraulic anchors. I mean the uh, concrete anchors. Install and torque the concrete anchors. So process of leveling the columns or plumbing the column. Joe is inserting the shims that come in the kit. Billy's giving a little push on the column in order to raise it up. Make it, make it easy for the guy sliding the shims under. And using the four foot or six foot magnetic level makes it easy. Okay, TP9KAC cable installation. You'll find that the cables are already attached to the carriage when the lift comes in. You'll see that there's one nut, there's a threaded rod on the end of the cable that's installed to the, uh, on the carriage here. That passes down, goes around the pulley, the base of the column, you come back up to the top, it goes up the back side of the carriage or, or column and then straight up through the hole. It's in the back, of, back corner, right corner of the carriage. From there it passes straight up through the hole in the top plate, then around the pulley. And as you can see, he's yet to route this to the offside, so we'll do that next. All right, Joe's installing the, the hydraulic hose. He's uh, get, making sure that that hose passes through the loops that are in the cross beam top beam and running it over to the power unit side. In this case we started at the off side. So. We like to fill the power unit before we hang it. It makes it a lot easier. It's a lot easier than holding yeah, being up on a ladder. It, and we fill it to the minimum line. So fill it to the minimum line. We're using the AW32 hydraulic fluid. We do is one guy holds, the other guy puts the bolts through. A little easier. So as you can see, we've got this lift pretty much installed. You'll see the arm pins in the packaging. It's as simple as sliding the pin through the hole, slide the arm over the torsion tube, drop the pin through. I missed that segment here. Same thing for the off side. Power unit side, I should say. Here's installing the arm restraint mechanism. Real simple. All you do is take take the spring and washer and cotter pin out. Real easy washer, cotter pin, spring. Nice. Bend it. Got it. No problem.
pin, washer, spring. So, in your parts box you'll find two small threaded bolts that have a loop on the end. And as you can see here, this is Billy's installing the safety linkage, safety shutoff cable. Go ahead, Bill. Safety shutoff cable. So it's crimped on the off side, passes across to the near side here, power unit side, comes down. As it passes through the near side cable loop at the top of the post, it's loose on this side. Uh, it's a pretty basic system. The cable passes through the safety shutoff switch on the top of the power, power unit motor here. Okay, TP9 KAC. We have the cable routed down to the bottom of the post, around the pulley, up the back side. It goes up, over, and across. Comes down the back side, the off side post, and there's the nut facing the ground. Same thing on this on the right side. It goes down. Around the pulley, up the back side of the post, over and across, down straight through the back, 